Okay, we're back live here at HP Discover in Frankfurt, Germany. I'm John Furrier with SiliconANGLE. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract a signal from the noise. This is day two here at HP Discover, and uh, yesterday was a great day. Uh, had a lot of interviews, almost 20 interviews, getting in the trenches, getting deep, extracting the signal from the noise. That's our purpose, that's our mission. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE.com, and I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. Check out all the research at the site, and uh, we're here with Scott Weller, who's the Vice President and General Manager of the Technology Services and Support uh, Group within HP. Scott, welcome back to theCUBE. Yeah, thanks Dave, <laughs> great to be back. Here at Discover, um, over the pond this time, for us anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so, big show, 9,000 people, you know, comparable in size to the, to the US, uh, yeah. which, is, which is impressive. So you guys are covering you know, nearly 20,000 attendees across the, the two shows that you do in, in uh, June and here. Right. So, what do you guys got going on at the event? What have you been spending your time doing? What are customers telling you? You know, so um, as you mentioned, we were in, uh, in Las Vegas about six months ago. And uh, since that time, we've seen a lot of traction, a lot more footprint in the cloud market. And we've built up a lot of new capabilities that are being announced here. So, uh, you know, we're all very excited about uh, the things that our customers will see here in Frankfurt. And, uh, and really the, the, the key theme is, uh, is uh, cloud and all of the uh, technology enablement for, uh, for what we call Converge Cloud. Right, so um, you guys are uh, not making a big press push at this event, but you've made several announcements over the last couple of months. Can you talk yeah, about those yeah, a little bit? Yeah, So let me put, uh, so you're talking about announcements in my business, so let me put it in the context of the cloud announcements here. So, uh, you know, uh, one of the things that we did announce here were, were several extensions to Cloud System, which is our flagship product for customers to build a private cloud. Uh, we talked about uh, new bursting capabilities, new cloud maps, uh, new uh, management and security capabilities, so that's that product. On the software side, we announced several new products, one of which is, is, a, is, a, is a great product for DevOps, where the target is, uh, is a hybrid environment, traditional, private, and public cloud. On the public cloud side, we announced our, uh, our platform as a service, which has been in beta for some time, and several uh, point products, if you will, for uh, communication service providers. So that then, uh, with that as a context in my business, we've, uh, we've announced several things, one of which is a, a pay-as-you-go model for customers who want to deploy something like cloud system but want to be able to make that OpEx and CapEx trade-off. So, and there were several others. So uh, again, a lot of emphasis on cloud. Um, you know, we've actually hit this part of the adopter curve where, where customers are just ready to go and they're out there actually buying technology products and solutions to get on that path. So Dave Donadelli talks about um, his group, the EG <coughs> group, uh, mm -hmm. enterprise group, yep. transforming virtually all the businesses that you guys participate in. Networking, mm -hmm. servers, storage, and services, right? Um, specifically, so talk about that transformation. You mentioned this pay-as-you-go model. That's pretty intriguing. Yeah. Uh, I presume that's an example of how you're trying to transform the way exactly. in which you create that customer experience. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. So, uh, so my business is in, uh, in in enterprise group Dave's organization, and uh, what I would say is that the uh, sort of the the approach to bringing technology to our customers is just changing. So what we've done is we've said, look, it really ought to start with what is the experience that we're trying to deliver? Uh, and then that ought to set the stage for what are the, you know, the, the product features, the speeds, the feeds, the, t the, the technical uh, services that go around that. You know, it used to be uh, you'd have a product and then do you want fries with that? That was, the, the, that was sort of the model for mm -hmm. services. Now it's really an integrated model all about what is, what is the, the, both the uh, buy, sell, and ownership experience for that technology. And so, yeah, I mean, I think uh, th that's been a major shift for us over the last 12 months is to, to create that kind of integrated model in the way we develop products and, and ultimately the experiences customers have with HP technology. Scott, we, had, we were hearing yesterday, obviously mm -hmm. big data is pretty much native within all the different people we talk mm -hmm. to, from customers to uh, system integrators and cloud providers, as well as HP. That kind of the big data DNA is now kind of native, as, as we call, called yeah, it. Yeah. Um, on the converged infrastructure side, on the infrastructure <coughs> side, um, a lot of services activity. We talked to some folks who are saying uh, traditional IT spend is kind of you know kind of hovering, but cloud spend is rapidly uh, rising yeah. uh, and scaling. So there's a lot of effort around the services. So um, 
that's kind of an interesting uh, data point we extracted out of yesterday. Uh, and then uh, yesterday's news was that EMC and VMware are spinning out Cloud Foundry, Spring Source, and Green Plum and the big, big Data Analytics, essentially cloud and big data yeah, analytics yeah, are being spun yeah. out of VMware. Um, so you kind of see the, the coalescing of what seems to be the industry strategy. Infrastructure, yep. and then developer. You mentioned DevOps, so, so what, yep. what are you seeing from HP standpoint relative to that context around the services? Because the customer demand seems to be high mm -hmm. for services, mm -hmm. yet it's still unclear what the path is. There's a variety of different options of private, hybrid, public cloud, Amazon and recently did a deal with NetApp. So all these things are kind of going on. So how yeah. do you make sense of it from the services standpoint? Because that seems to be the action is people are, are planning on what to do. Uh, mm -hmm. And what are you guys doing in that area? <coughs> and, and how do you talk about that? Because you know, DevOps seems to be developer focused, more applications. Mm -hmm. And then the infrastructure obviously is a lot of the software led stuff that we've been hearing from, from Dave yeah. uh, Donatelli's team. Yeah. So I, I agree completely, and in fact, uh, I would add a third, which is the whole big data information optimization piece of that. So, so on the DevOps side, as I mentioned, you know, our software group is all over that, uh, and they are, uh, they're, they're, I think they, they may be the first in the industry that's taken that step to recognize that uh, DevOps isn't about a single target. It's like, how are you going to manage all of these workloads moving everywhere uh, around the ecosystem? So that's one. On the infrastructure side, uh, you know, I, I would say that um, this model that uh, you know maybe uh, Amazon pioneered uh, the, the platform as a ser infrastructure as a service model is uh, is now ubiquitous, and it's a question of it's the standard sort of supplier uh, and partner uh, question is who's going to deliver the best experience for you, and it goes beyond just the technology, but what is the service level? That's one of the key questions that uh, that people are asking is. You know, what is a service level I'm going to get? Anybody who will bet their business on a technology needs to understand who will I call, what is the, uh, what is the downtime going to look like if is there is some, what does the remediation look like and so on, is there root cause analysis and so on, or is it sort of just like, well, we were down, you know? So, so that's really key. And then on the information side, I, I think we've gotten again to a point in the technology curve where you can, you can make some, some uh, strategic choices. There are enough suppliers out there, there are enough different models out there, and even business models behind it. So I think, uh, yeah, I think we're, we're at a very interesting point in time and uh, you know, the, the, really the buyer has all the advantage. Talk about the uh, services option now within HP, because obviously HP is huge, obviously. Right. The services side ranges <coughs> from you know, outsourcing on one end, which is <coughs> like the old way, and then now right. under uh, technology services under Dave Donatelli, it's your blocking and tackling IT services where that's transforming for on-premise uh, with a lot of activity, yep. and then it's, you know, <coughs> as you said, pay as you go. Um, where, where are the customers in their evolution <laughs> yeah. to migration to the cloud or hybrid or integrated cloud where they can get the on-demand utility type computing that they're looking for. You mentioned pay as you go, and you right. know, where are right. the customers uh, at in terms of on the scale, 10 being you know, fully adopted and zero being not doing anything? Because you guys, are, there's a lot of education seems to be involved mm -hmm. and, and a lot of hand-holding or white glove treatment around you know, how to really migrate things over and or while yeah. business is running, how do we you know, move the value into, the, into these services, these new services, which is IT services and also you start to talk about applications. Right. So I, <clears throat> I would say that uh, you know, there's, no, there's no one characterization for even a single customer, depending on what their department is trying to do and, uh, and where they are in the, in the technology adoption curve. So a single customer can be all over that and every, every step along the way. What we're seeing is that there are two fundamental paths to the cloud. One is where a company realizes you know, my developers are, are being uh, you know, teased and taunted, if you will, to, to find faster ways than IT can provide them a server or a pool of resources. So they're going out to the Amazons and others and, and they're saying, look, that's just not sustainable for us. We have a lot of data that we're worried about and so on. So that's, that's a path to, to a private cloud. Once that happens, other departments begin to realize that pool of resources are available, marketing and so on and eventually mainstream applications can find their way through a, an app migration process into that environment and then eventually bursting and then onto the public cloud. So that's one path that we see all the time. The other path is, is a traditional outsourcing customer says, you know what, uh, I've been outsourcing with you, I've got a few workloads that I'm just ready to take to the cloud now. Help me do that migration and I leap directly to the cloud. So uh, we, we're seeing customers do all of the above, all at the same time. And, uh, and really, again, it's about you know, what are their needs, what is their sort of appetite, and also their sensitivity to where the data is. You know, we have customers who have data like, tr like trading uh, sites 
the data is out there. It's a, it's publicly available. The question is how quickly can you act on it? And it's the output that's the the key IP. Uh, other customers, you know, they have uh, uh, you know, design foundries. They have terabytes of data in their design. They, they don't have the ability to just move that around. So again, it, it depends on what am I trying to do, what's the nature of my data set, and, and what are my concerns about privacy and latency yeah, I mean, well, and so Data is a real big factor because you know, public cloud has been criticized for the lack of support around data because data has a couple issues around security, but yeah. also the scale of data. You can Correct. put it out there, you really don't want it to go away, so kind of yeah. that Amazon model doesn't really work there very well right now. It's kind of, kind of kludgy and evolving. But, the, the enterprise customers, they want enterprise grade cloud at public cloud prices. Correct. Kind of that's kind of the, yeah. where they start thinking about, okay, yeah, it's economic advantages. So talk about specifically the SLA involvement because HP has done very, mm -hmm. very well. We, we talk on uh, David Scott and the storage side around right. these guarantees he has, these promotions mm -hmm. they are often guarantees. Um, yeah. Is HP doing anything similar in, in that kind of SLA guarantee uh, mode and, and two, um, in terms of around SLA and, and delivery because enterprise right. grade is one of those it's, it's, the, it's the shark fin or the ice, under the tip of the iceberg, underneath the water, is there's more cost involved, so that's one yeah, question. Yeah. And the other question is um, you know, multi-vendor, because now you have multiple clouds. You have OpenStack, you have AWS, right. and a variety of other things of your own cloud. So, so two questions, uh, you know, one, how do you deal with the enterprise grade SLA requirements yeah. uh, and any kind of guarantees? And two, how do you handle this multi-vendor, which has been a, and it's a great area for HP. Right. You know, so I think you've, you've raised a good point, and, and this is why uh, outside of the DevOps community, a lot of the public cloud offers to date have, have really not been viable for real business. And so uh, HP's cloud, uh, and especially the managed cloud offer, uh, does bring a, a lot of those SLAs, but you know, it begins with enterprise grade infrastructure. Um, and, uh, and understanding how enterprises actually build out infrastructure, which is not necessarily what is built out there from a, from a public cloud standpoint, or leveraging some of the retail uh, anchor tenants uh, in the way they've built infrastructure. So, uh, so it starts with that, and then the SLA's on top of it, absolutely. In my business, uh, you know, our business is all about uh, service levels. And, uh, and so it's understanding that you want to prevent issues to begin with, you want to preempt issues through analytics and so on. And then it comes down to you know, understanding what is my response going to be when there is an issue and baking that into a service level agreement. And that, that's just uh, run rate business for us. There's a lot of talk these days about putting mission critical applications in, in the cloud. Mm -hmm. um, are, yeah. you, are you seeing more of that and how does that change the way in which you're supporting customers? You know, I, I'm not seeing that, Dave, in the traditional sense. Um, uh, you know, applications that have been built from the beginning to be uh, uh, self-resilient, um, some of the search tools, uh, Hadoop and other things that have built, been built that way, you know, uh, can, be, uh, can be made mission critical. But when you take a very traditional workload um, and try to move it onto the cloud, that is really a difficult proposition. Because in the end, mission critical comes down to understanding um, you know, unplanned downtime and understanding your response to it. And, uh, and, and most of the cloud providers just don't have an answer for that. That's not, that doesn't necessarily fit their business model and it's quite a stretch to get there. Yeah, I think it's a lot of futures marketing, right? Uh, um, Correct. We're seeing yeah. some of the emerging cloud uh, providers talk about that and maybe some of the the flash guys talking about how you could, yeah, in theory you could you could do that. Right. Oracle, of course, is big, doing a big push for its cloud, but that's a lot of uh, software as a service. So yeah. my, my second question on that, Scott, is are you seeing any indication that, um, that so-called hybrid cloud, and what I mean by hybrid cloud is certainly people have public and private, right. we know that, but if you narrowly define hybrid cloud as a federated application, are you seeing any indication that customers want to do that? So, so absolutely. So uh, we, we may be defining hybrid cloud a little bit differently than right. so, so So what, what we're saying is, is that look, first of all, you want the opportunity and option to deploy your workloads where they best fit the environment, they best fit the service level, the cost, and so on. And then you want the ability to move those workloads almost at will. And I think in the future what we're going to see is there are going to be brokering systems that uh, almost like energy trading that says, you know, today I'm getting a better deal over here, or I'm getting a better service level over there, you know, and I'm going to move my, my workloads there preferentially and in sort of in an automated way. 
So it's that ability to decide where and when and how um, without having to worry a lot about, okay, you know, what is the operating system, what is the operating environment and so on, and actually sort of bring the question up a level to you know, these sort of business questions and everything else is sort of abstracted away in that model. So what do you make of, um, we've been tracking Amazon pretty closely, they had the, the big reInvent conference last week. I, John and I joke about it a lot, especially me, I talk about Amazon's SLAs being, hey, we'll do our best and if we don't send us an email, yeah. we'll get back to you <laughs> within 24 hours or something like that. But yeah. nonetheless, Amazon's being very aggressive now in the, in yeah. the data center. We sure. saw them at sure. some of the big events. Um, what do you tell customers? Um, or, or what are customers telling you? Are they yeah. willing to put their data and their apps in Amazon? Uh, is it more just the development crowd still? What are, you, what are your mainstream customers telling you? So what we're hearing is that customers want that. Uh, they, they, they really have a desire and appetite to move workloads into that kind of environment. What they're unsure of is what is a, a company like Amazon, and they're not the only one, uh, but what are these companies telling them in terms of uh, what is the experience I'm going to get? You know, what happens when there is an issue? You know, it's, there's nothing wrong with best effort. You know, best effort is a fine model, but you know, best effort doesn't work for almost every mainstream business. So, so those are the key questions, and I think any provider out there needs to be able to answer those questions if they're really going to be able to draw in the hardcore business community, which is, which is huge. So, you know, I don't blame anyone for wanting to get into that market, but you know, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. it, it looks easy, it looks like it's just like a increment from where they are, but no, it's, it's a huge lift. Mm -hmm. Scott, my final questions, we're, we're getting on the time limit here, but um, you guys have hundreds of customers uh, with cloud system and, and, and with yes. the cloud services, and you guys are you know, working with customers to, to yeah. migrate services and build services and they consume the services. Um, what have you guys learned around cloud? Because you know, yesterday was the consensus was, we, and, and we've been talking about this before, is that no one customer is the same. It's like you can't boilerplate spec a customer. Their needs are different, they may have different right. applications. Yep. Uh, but at the end of the day, enterprise grade infrastructure is pretty consistent. You know what it is when you see it and it works, it has to be up, all that good stuff, yep. industry standard servers and whatnot so, and, and, and so on. So, so the, what are you finding with those hundreds of customers as you guys expand out the build and the <laughs> consume side of the business? Is it, are they rolling their own? Um, do they want to manage services? Is it a mix of both? What are you, what are you, what are you seeing uh, from what you've learned and what are you guys seeing happen in the next uh, few months, year? Yeah. So I'll, I'll share the sort of the cloud system experience, which uh, again is our product for for deploying private clouds. What 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 sometimes happens is this customer says, uh, and and this tends to be the very large uh, customer who who have actually moved along the virtualization curve early. They'll say, you know, that's a great product. What I want to do is I want to disintegrate that product into its elements, and I kind of want to roll my own. And these are, these are the kinds of IT shops that have a lot of capability and uh, they have a lot of design capability and also execution. Um, but you know, so, so those are really the, the two different sets and what we're not seeing a lot of is customers saying, you know, I'm not ready for the cloud, I think we're well past that now. And, and so I, what, I, what I expect in the next year or two is that customers will start to just assume that they can do private cloud, although it's, it's actually, uh, it's not an easy uh, thing to do if, you're, if you've been traditional all along, if you haven't explored virtualization and so on. But we, we, we do make it easier with these products. And, but I think over time, customers are going to begin to, to sort of segment into, I, I'm not going to necessarily roll my own, I'll, I'll take a reference architecture, I'll set, take a set of technology, but I'll deploy that in the way that makes sense for me. What about security in that equation? Where are we with security? You know, security is something that is, uh, is always a moving target, no matter what you do. So, uh, but uh, as I mentioned earlier, cloud system, we've just uh, added a lot of security capabilities. We'll continue to do that. So whether it's in our standalone software or in our point solutions, you'll, you'll, you'll see that as a major, major focus for us. Any goals that you have in the services group this year you want to share with the folks out there mm -hmm. in terms of what you guys are trying to do and uh, for, ne for yeah. next year? Sure, so we don't talk about futures, but I'll tell you there are two areas that I'm really focused on now. One is deep analytics for preemptive uh, work so that uh, you know it's not even prevention; it's beyond prevention to preemption. That, so that's one area, and then the other area, is, uh, as we've been talking about, is service levels in the in the context of a bursting situation. That's something that the market hasn't really addressed, and you'll see us focus in that area. Okay, Scott Weller, uh, Vice President, General Manager of the uh, Technology Services within the Convergent Infrastructure Group and Cloud, and uh, all the great stuff with the Enterprise Grade Cloud. Uh, thanks for coming on the Cube. We'll be right Thank back you, with Jeff. our next guest after this short break.